Hi everyone, welcome back to Library Time with Mrs. Poole. I have a little friend that wanted to come in and say hello to you. I have a little something to put on her head, but I don't know if she's going <laughs> to enjoy it or not. Let's see. Does she enjoy it? Well, maybe for a moment. <laughs> All right, you. All right, everyone, I have one of our favorites. I read it every year. It is from my home library, another wonderful Halloween tale. And if you're in first through sixth grade, you will probably remember it. Um, if you're in kindergarten, it might be brand new, but I think it's a favorite every year. And I bring it in to share with you guys every Halloween. So it is called John Pig's Halloween. It is written by Jan L. Waldron and pictures are by David McPhail. And are you ready? Here we go. John Pig's Halloween. It was cool and hazy on Halloween night. The silvery moon shed a ghostly white light. As the fog billowed in and bats flitted about, trick-or-treat piggies got dressed to step out. Two of the pigs made a long flowing cape with safety pins, thread, and some shiny black tape. Another smeared rouge on the beaming brown face of a piggy whose ears were wrapped up in red lace. One of the pigs wore a huge rubber nose, suspenders with knickers and blue checkered hose. A tiny chic pig donned a towering chapeau, then finished things off with a tangerine bow. In masks and warm jackets and long floppy shoes, the boisterous piggies perfected their booze. But one silent piggy, whose first name was John, just sat in the shadows with no costume on. Let's move it, let's roll. Where's your bag in disguise? I'm not going, John said. Go without me, you guys. Not going, they howled. Did we hear you right? I'm tired, said John. I'll stay home tonight. So the gussied up piggies all bid John adieu as they rushed to the doorway and crowded on through. But John wasn't tired. He was nervous and scared. He would have dressed up and gone out if he dared. When no treaters called or were even in sight, John feared he was in for a long, lonely night. So he pulled a fat pumpkin from deep in the pile and carved out a face with a wide, jagged smile. And he thought he heard grumbling outside the door and saw wavering spirits float up through the floor. And when a dark shadow swept past his nose, John dove under the table, shivered and froze. Kaboom, came a bang and a loud piercing, yup, had somebody crashed who needed his help? He heard a long moan, then the door seemed to creak. Who was outside? Did he dare take a peek? When he did, what he saw was a striped yellow-eyed cat and a small crumpled witch in a banged up black hat. What happened, gasped John. Are you here for a treat? Of course, said the witch, without skipping a beat. But these steps are too dark. Where's your Halloween light? Just 
a minute, said John. This will brighten the night. That's better, she said. Now the others can see. So where are the goodies for Kitty and me? We have to work on witches' manners. We have long curly ribbons of red licorice and crystal rock candy right here in this dish. Yuck, the witch scowled. You call that a treat? You need savory snacks that real monsters can eat. As she zoomed round the room with her broomstick and cat, she spied leftover pumpkin and said, don't waste that. We can make a molasses and spice pumpkin pie. Salt seeds and toast them till crispy and dry. So put on an apron and go wash your hands. Then get out some bowls and a dozen round pans. Have you got any apples, any cinnamon sticks? Find what I need and I'll show you some tricks. John and the witch began sifting and stirring. She cracked the eggs as the blender was whirring. He scooped out pumpkin and mashed it all up. She mixed heaps of sugar and cream in a cup. He rolled out the dough for the tarts and the pies while the witch made witch cookies with raisins for eyes. Now we're cooking, she said with a grin. Open the oven, we've got food to put in. Soon more trick-or-treaters began to stop by. They'd seen the lit pumpkin and smelled the warm pie. They're my pals, the witch whispered in John's little ear. They're loud and they're messy, but nothing to fear. Trick-or-treat, howled the callers. Bring on the fun. John offered them seeds since the pies were not done. When the Halloween goodies were ready to eat, the noisy crowd drooled and tripped over their feet. A man in a cape from his ears to his toes smeared cream on his chin and some more on his nose. A wild woolly werewolf who howled at the moon slurped pie from a bowl with a big wooden spoon. While the witch and a wizard slow waltzed through the air, a slimy green creature slipped right off its chair and oozed in between dirty discling brutes who had spiders with webs on their crusty white suits. As this ghostly group danced and chowed down his food, a beaming John Pig was caught up in the mood. you could stay and this party could last. Me too, gushed the witch. This bash was a blast. But I'm sorry to say that our gang must head back while the moon is still out and the sky is still black. There is always next year, next Halloween, we'll come back for a visit and check out the scene. John's housemates returned with stuffed bags and cold toes, with popsicle noses and lopsided bows. Poor John, they all sighed. He has really missed out. He's skipped Halloween and been lonely, no doubt. out one door and going in the other. Yikes, said the pigs as they spotted John's pies. They could not believe their tired pink eyes. Welcome home, said John Pig. Would you care for some moose, persimmon plum pie, or my spiced apple juice? Our house is so cozy, the aroma so pleasing. 
We are so tuckered out from our trick-or-treat teasing. John offered his housemate spot muffins with cream, orange striped sundaes and pumpkin supreme. Look at this kitchen, there's so much to eat. Yum, cooed the pigs as they downed one last treat. John opened the pumpkin and blew out the light. He covered the cakes and called it a night. He climbed up the stairs and crawled into bed with visions of goblins and ghosts in his head. In the dark, he slept soundly, no longer afraid, and dreamed of the many new friends that he'd made. The end. There's John Pig's Halloween, one of my favorites. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Happy Halloween, and until next time, happy reading.